And then for anybody that knew to the uh, Zoom meeting, all we require is that everybody just make sure everything's muted. Um, you know, the small some bit of backdrop noise, uh, you know, does wreak havoc with these meetings. So um, if anybody does have uh, anything to say at any time, um, we can do it two ways. One, one you can either unmute and chime in, or two, usually you can send a message uh, in the chat. And then I can usually, um, if you want to send a message into the chat group, then I can um, call on you at the appropriate time. Um, let's just make sure that we get uh, the roll call of people online for our attendance. Um, Therese, other than the board members, is Kyle. Doug's on. Joanne. Joanne, okay. Joanne, um, Judy, Ellie. Um, 6502. Misty. That so did Janine. Who is six, who's two, three, four, six, five, oh, two? Is that Ellie? Oh, no, oh. Ellie's on. I can see her. And I can see Janine and I is can see AJ? Shane. No, Ellie. No, Ellie is 6502. Oh, that's weird. She's on twice. Okay. Um, or she might, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I can she see might her be name. Connected. She may be on the phone and connected to the computer too at the same time or something. That could be. Okay. Well, all right. So we will get started. So uh, first on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Did anybody have anything that they wanted to amend on the agenda or approve as is? Therese, I don't, I'm not sure if it'll be part of your COVID discussion, but I wanted to spend a couple of minutes and talk about the budget, uh, this year's budget and next year's budget and how it might be impacted by some of the things that are going on. <clears throat> Sure, we can do that under COVID-19. Okay. All right, anything else? Move to accept as printed. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. And we will move forward. We do have our appointment uh, well, first we got public comment and inquiry. If there's anything that is not part of the discussion for this evening that anybody would like to bring up, now is the time. You can either do that by unmuting your phone at this time, or you could send a message in the group chat and I can call on you one by one. I have a little thing. The bench down at Peavine is... Um, the seat is askew and it just needs to be set back up on its, uh, on the legs. Okay. The one, the one down by the boat launch. It's an easy one. All right, that's perfect. I'll let Richard, I'll let, let, let Richard know, thank you. Perfect, thanks. Okay. All right. Doug, you get anything? No, no, I don't have anything yet. All right. Anybody else? And just for the record, doesn't look like Doug did get a haircut, so him and I are the same. <laughs> <laughs> Want to see my man, bud? <laughs> <laughs> All right. We will move forward. Uh, let's see. Do we have everybody from the rec committee on the line currently? I think so. It looks like Shane's having trouble. His keeps saying connecting to audio. So I don't know if he is having trouble connecting to the audio or what, but um, I'll see if I can send him a message. So I think you're all right. I mean, if they're having a little bit of issues getting on, we could, you know, we could take care of probably a, an item or two while they're waiting. Yeah, let me try to send him a message. I mean, although Ellie's on, so she can hear and speak. So, but I'll send Shane a message. If she's on a phone, Ellie may not be aware she's muted. But Therese, you should have the ability to unmute her as the 
Yeah, yeah let me see. Uh, sure, she is on mute, at least at one spot. She's on here twice, once with her phone number, once with her name, but I will unmute her on the phone. I just unmuted her phone. Okay, and I'll send Shane a message. Did you unmute her phone or somebody else's? You, somebody else's. Oh, that might be AJ. Oops. Nine eight nine nine. All right, so I I I now can talk. Okay. All right, let me ask. So Shane. you can hear me? Yeah, yes. we can hear. You. Yes. Okay. So I guess we will, if the rec committee's, how we can move forward with the rec committee. <laughs> So the last time uh, where we left off, wise, well, we had gotten as far as the skate park. Um, you know, we had the 20 by 80 design. Um, we had um, solicited a a bid to do the four feet of excavation and new sub base material to clean up the um, the clay issues down there. And um, for the most part, with the board members at that time, we just wanted an itemized uh, sheet of what Parker was going to include in his uh, $55,000 um, estimate. That's kind of where we left it. Does that sound right, members? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, and then we got some more, got some new information in our packets um, in regards to the layout of project which I don't I won't go through all the details but maybe just kind of if I read off a couple of these it might answer some of the questions that we did have um, let me just get to the spot here so according to the quote here uh, Therese that um, that the town will be responsible for excavation to prep the site, which is removing four feet of the, you know, unsuitable material uh, in a pattern, which is 24 by 84 feet. Well, except if you read down on page three under optional deductions to get the cost of 55,000, it's actually gonna be 20 by 72. Okay, well, I know we got to talk about that. Um, yeah, okay. Well, I guess I guess the one question I have in regards to that that didn't seem exactly clear in this is, you know, we're excavating four feet of material out, and obviously four feet of new, new sub-base needs to be brought in. And then there's the one foot that, one foot of material that Parker has included in his quote. So is it four plus one or is it three plus one? I think it's still gonna, it's gonna be four plus one. I called North Road Excavation today um, and said, look, the, the, di the measurements of the um, skate park are gonna change. Um, and I said, so it looks like you're gonna be doing, instead of 20 by 80, we're gonna do, do um, 20 by 72. And I was gonna need him to put in an additional foot of the three quarter crushed stone, compact it and all that. And he said, no problem, since his, his a quote already um, is gonna be reduced because we don't need him to do the uh, original estimation of what we thought it was gonna be, which was 80 feet. He said that his price will be, you know, is not gonna be any more than the 99.84, so to pick up that other, to install that and compact that foot of three quarter that we need to put on the top. Okay. Well, I just wanted to follow you on that. So the quote, the initial quote that we gotten from him was to excavate out four feet of material and put four feet back. Is that correct? Yes, at a 20 by 80 size. So when yep. I called him today, I said, you're gonna excavate out um, the additional foot and it's going to be a smaller you know diameter and he was fine with that and i said i'm going to need you to put in and compact another foot of stone so he thinks the price will will okay. be similar because it's less area that he's you know doing so okay so before we only had him putting three feet back and then parker was in the one foot no we had him doing four feet so we were going to be able to reduce it because there was some confusion between what Parker was going to do and what we were going to do. 
So now we're so we're still doing. Aren't we still doing the four foot plus a foot or are no, we? not according <laughs> to the bid there. Okay, then I no. miss miss rest. So either way, there's going to be some savings then because yeah. we're going to reduce the dimensions of it, and then yeah. I'll tell I'll have um, North Road do the four foot, which is what his bid was anyways. Um, just knowing that that foot of material that he's going to put in is three quarter inch crushed stone and not one and a quarter. So either way, we're good. Can you folks hear me okay? Yes. yes, we can now, Shane. All right. Um, so Parker was going to take care of one foot. He needed right. three additional feet. So it's three plus one. And okay. the footprint of the stone needs to be a little bit bigger than the footprint of the park. Right. So that it's not right at the hairy edge of the stone we're putting in. It's It's got an extra couple feet on the side, I think. The footprint specified in here somewhere. Um, but I believe it's it's like an extra four feet in each direction. Yeah, I was just I guess my question was just making sure that what we had in the quote from the excavation company to to do the site work, what exactly we had in that initial quote, because if we did have them taking four out and putting four in, yeah, then wouldn't that wouldn't we get credit back from because there was some optional deductions that he had, yep. and one it's right. thirty five hundred to do the upper yeah. foot layer. If you look at North Road's bid, right at the top, it says four feet by twenty feet by eighty feet. So that's what I got a price on at the time. So if so I need yeah. to adjust that, I, I called him today about the other stone. So I think that his price of ninety nine eighty four is still going to cover it. And, and so we're assuming that we're going to get a whatever, an optional deduction of 3,500 because we're doing that scope of work? Um, from Parker, we're gonna have to in order to get his bid down from 65. Okay. No, I'm just trying to, yes. I'm just trying to wrap my head around that. I didn't know if we were doing three plus one or four plus one, so okay. Yeah. It's three, it's three plus one and the footprint for the stone needs to be 24 by 84. That's if we're doing full size, but that's now reduced to 24 by 76. Okay. Does that, does that make sense to you folks? Right. Yes. Yep. So that was the first part that the town was going to be um, responsible for, and the town's also responsible for the drainage piece, um, which we had talked about prior. Mm -hmm. um, well, the town would be doing the final grading, ditching, and seeding and stuff too. Yep, and we'd planned on that, actually the road crew doing that. So I had already talked to Alan about doing that. So I'll, so that's fine. So I guess right now, I mean, it, this piece that we were talking about, if we we're sticking with the footprint of the 20 by 80, um, Parker's number is, well, from what I see, it's 65,000 minus the 3,500. Does that sound correct? Yep, minus all the other optional deductions on the page three, yes. Uh, on the subject of the optional reductions, I think we should keep the uh, the quarter pipe that he's listing as an option. Um, if, we're, if we're saving on the stone and on the footprint, um, that second quarter pipe is pretty important. Uh, we can skip the mani pad. Well, it's it's not going to work because the select board had already said in a prior meeting how much money they would give <laughs> towards it. So we really don't have we have to get Michael's bid to fifty five thousand dollars in order to make it come in at what you guys already have in the account, which was. Well, we we have fifty seven, and that means we're seven hundred and fifty bucks shy. So to me, that's that's in the noise because we. Because we also are doing the extra whatever, we'll round it to ten thousand dollars with the site work. Um, Where are we getting the ten thousand from? It's going to have to come from the um, the the rec facility fund money that was out, you know, other than money that was set aside for the skate park. It would have to come from the other money that. The, the other appropriations. 
And we had talked about last time that any fundraising that would happen between now and the park would go back towards the ten thousand dollars. And if for whatever reason, if if they if they fundraise greater than ten thousand, then they could put that extra funds towards the park. Uh, with fundraise. So it sounds like right now. So it sounds like right now we're looking at the 20 by 72, if I just want to get it right. To get to the 55,000, we're at the 20 by 72 design. Yes. But it sounds like you want to add back in the mini quarter pipe, is that right? Yes, he was gonna nix one of them at one end um, on the eight foot long side of, of the park. So we're really at 57. 750. 750. Yep. And then we're at, you know, you know, we'll round it up to the ten thousand dollars for the site excavation. So we're at sixty-seven seven fifty. Yes. Done right? Yep. I mean, can you maybe explain uh, to the board because I have a basic idea, but I don't really have a full understanding. Can you maybe explain why the addition or or if taking away that other mini pipe, what that would do or how it changes the user sure. experience of it. Sure. At the end of a park, you know, this is a linear park for all intents. And there's no way to turn around without something to give you some momentum to do so. It's it's essentially a dead end portion of the park if we don't have a wedge or a little launch like that that gives them a place to, to park and then a place to take off from. Um, it seems like a small thing, but gee whiz, when, when you've got a pile of kids trying to trying to get stuff done to use um, one of the features or more of the features, you really need a place to turn around, especially in a linear park. Do you folks do you folks have the images that went with his quote? <clears throat> yeah. Yes. There's there's a larger uh, decked mini on the left end in the bottom image, and then a small mini um, in the bottom right of the bottom image, and it's that bottom right one that he and I had talked about being the um, the possible sacrificial one, but both of us agree it's better to keep that one. Yeah, I'd keep both of them and ditch the mini pad. Shane, where's the mini pad? Um, the mini pad is that table looking thing in the middle of the bottom image. It's six inches tall and like, I don't know, 12 feet long or so. Oh, okay, yep. Thank you. That That's something that can be an, an add-on that wouldn't be concrete. It could be steel um, and uh, Lexan. So it could be something that we could add to the park at a, at a different time from a donor or whatever. So it's not like it has to be cast in concrete. Okay. I think for what it's worth for usability, we, we've sort of stripped this down a lot as it is. And if we're gonna sort of niggle over one small element that's about a thousand dollars difference of what we're looking at, you know, for, for user function, that it seems like a silly thing to be nixing that just to just to hit an exact number. I don't know. That's just where I land with this. I think we've we've really sort of asked the rec department to go back to the drawing board a number of times and they've done that and they've met our requests every single time and to to sort of argue over one small element that really actually becomes detrimental to the overall function of a place why build it in the first place if that's what we're going to end up doing in the long run I think at this point, it's probably just easy, you know, the easiest thing to do would be to put a motion on the table, um, which would be to approve the um, the skate park um, with the dimensions of the 20 by 72 design. 
um, to also, well, 20 by 72, which is 55,000, and then to add back in the mini quarter pipe for 2750 for a total of 57 or 57750 plus the, the site work, um, which is in the amount of 9984. So I would entertain a motion and a second. We're ready to move forward with that. So moved. We do. We do have a question from Carl, uh, Kyle. <coughs> Hi. Thanks. Um, just to be clear, is is the motion you're putting forward uh, with or without the manual pad? Without. 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 Okay. Yeah. My my thought on this, Kyle, is that we can add a steel one. Add, adding a steel one? Yes, at, at a later time from either donations or additional funds that we raise um, to have the mani pad be the showstopper for the general function. You know, I, I'd like to get some portable grind ledges and, and a mani pad and that kind of stuff added in to that middle space on that on that long side that doesn't have much. Uh -huh. I'd, love to have, I'd like, like to have a rail and, and ledges and, and a mani pad at a minimum. Sure. Yeah, that that all sounds good. Yeah, my my um, like Lindley was saying, um, it's good to have. I understand um, cost and and all of that, but it's important to have a variety of features in a skate park, and that's just what the little manual pad is. And I agree with you, Shane. It'd be great to get a grind box and a rail in there. Um, So I guess what I'm saying is it's just important to have diversity. You know, if it's it's great if you have a bunch of quarter pipes, but there's got to be, you know, something else to it to really make it a skate park, in my opinion. Yeah. Kyle, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. And we ended up having to chop this into two phases. Okay. We had, we had like a big concrete pour <laughs> side and then a street style on the other on the other two thirds. It was going to be another 40 feet or so by eight, 70 or 80 feet uh, that was going to have the street style stuff. So we, we figured we'd try to hit the hard contours uh, on the first four. And then as we, you know, have additional funds to do phase two, we would most certainly have all kinds of street st streetscape stuff. Um, yeah, cool. And, and um, I'm certainly late later than everybody else coming to this topic. So there's a lot I don't know, like Shane just told me and, and that all sounds good. And um, yeah, I, regardless, I'm wholeheartedly in support of the skate park. I think it's a really great, great thing that'll benefit the town and, and those in it, so. Thank you, Kyle. So we currently have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Do we have a discussion after a second? Because I'd like to add something to the motion. Yeah, usually the discussion comes after the second. Yep. Yeah. Okay, then I'd, I'd second it. Okay, and discussion? <clears throat> I'd like to have uh, amend the motion to include the spending of the $10,000, you know, rounded up to $10,000 to come from the rec fund, uh, general fund as, as part of the motion. Okay. Yep, no, I think the intent was that, you know, that the total spending, which in this case, this motion will bring is about six, uh, 76,750, yep. you know, that that would all come out of the recreation right. fund. Yep, yep. Wanted to make sure that's part of the yep. documentation. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah, uh, I got, how much was that number you just said, Chris? The total amount, the total amount including uh, the site work, it, it's 76,750. Oh, I thought we were talking 67,750. Yeah. 
I'm I'm sorry. I got my numbers back. It's yeah, you got double. Seven, seven, fifty. Yes, you're right. Okay. Because I I okay. I just want to make sure I wasn't hearing something different. <laughs> no, we had it right the first time. I just said it wrong the second time. Okay. So sixty-seven, seven fifty. <clears throat> So we lobby paid out of the recreation fund. Correct. What's been already allocated for the park, an additional twelve thousand seven fifty coming out of the the fund for development of the park of the right. area. And then, and then any of the fundraising that they'll do between now and the construction of the park, they would put towards this. Is what we talked about. Okay. And if they and if they go over that that amount of payback, then they can add that towards the park. So we had a we had a motion. We had a motion by Lindley, a second by Paul, and and so all in favor wise, we had two. Dave or Mo? Nay. Mo's nay. Dave. I'm going to go uh, with aye. Okay, so motion moves. All right, so I guess we're at the point where we're gonna start building this thing, hopefully. So Shane, Shane, if you could give Michael Parker my number, that would be great so that I can set up um, a job meeting for North Road and he, and there's obviously some COVID-19 uh, things that he's going to have to adhere to. So I just wanna make sure that he and, I are on the same page. Sure, sure. Uh, what digits do you prefer, Therese? The office is fine, the 2349340. Okay. Perfect, thanks, Shane. No problem at all. Thank you very much, select board. Yeah, thank you guys, thank you. Thank you, thank you. have a good do, do you have any other questions for us? I don't. At this time, no. Nope. Nope. All right. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you very, very much for your time. Yeah. Yep. Have a thank good you. evening. You too. You Thanks, too. Shane. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for all your hard work on it, Shane. I, yeah. Hey, I'm I'm happy this is happening. Bye. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for letting me be be here. Yeah. Right. Take care, everybody. All right. Bye. Thank you. Uh, bye. 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 All right, we just lost about uh... <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Our so, ratings are going down. Can, can I ask you a quick question? So that's four in favor and one against. Did I have those right. numbers correct? Yes. Yeah, well, the, the, yeah, that's fine. Or it's technically three in favor and one against because the chair doesn't vote unless there's a tie. Okay, so, gotcha. Technically. Thank you. Lisa, can you just make sure that it's in there in the minutes that any money fundraised needs to offset that the money we spend to North Road properties, that 10,000, and then it can go to the new, um, anything else they want to add? You can just put a note in there and I'll edit it when you send them to me if you want. Any Okay, any money raised, okay. Fundraised over the 10,000, even if you just leave it dot, 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 I'll fill it in. Okay. It's just, awesome. it'll be right there. Perfect, yep. thanks. It's right at the end. Love okay. it, thanks. All right. And uh, next on the agenda was, um, uh, let's see here, to reappoint uh, Bill Hall as the representative to the Regional Transportation Advisory Committee until March 31st, 2021. So I would entertain a motion to reappoint Bill Hall so move. Second. Okay, all in favor? Right. Okay, and this, this appointment, uh, Lisa, will be until March 31st of 2021. So yeah, that was in the agenda. Thank you. One year appointment. Yep. I know these appointments get tricky because some of them are one, some of them are two. Or, Excuse so. me. Yep. This, uh, yeah, mine says uh, 33121. Yep. Okay. All right, and then 
uh, sign the local emergency operation plan adoption form. Trace, you on? Sure, we went through, Kelly sent this to Dave Aldrigetti and myself. We went through and then told, you know, had her do any updates, changes, whether it's a personnel that changed, emails, phone numbers, et cetera. So we went through it a couple of times and mm -hmm. she had went through and made all the appropriate changes. So you're supposed to adopt this every year by May 1st. And since um, it's saying here, because of COVID-19, they are actually allowing me to type in somebody's name. So I can certainly sign my name because um, in order to sign it, you have to have taken at least ICS 100, which I have taken 100 and 200. And then it says I can type in a name. So I could always type in the name of... Um, Chris Jarvis, if you guys approve it, that because um, it says looks like we need two signatures. Okay. And we, once we get it, we send it to um, to Rivers too, so they have a copy of it as well. Okay. And and Therese, just for further um, information, if you have anything that does need to be signed by myself, if you can PDF it to me, I can I have a I can sign the documents and send them back to you. Okay. Perfect. I have a sign tool that have my has my signature in it. Okay. Great. I'll, I'll do that tomorrow then. So, so, um, so you're just looking for a motion to allow. I am looking for a motion to adopt our local emergency management plan. Okay. And it's, we have to do it every year by May 1st. And then the only signature on it would be mine. Yours and mine. Yours okay. and mine. All right, so I'd entertain a motion to adopt the local emergency operation plan. So, Therese, did we we just updated uh, names, address, you know, names and phone numbers and contact information. We didn't really change any of the procedures. No, not really. It's kind of hard at this time of year because we couldn't all get together. So we went all through right. it. We all I read it, Kelly read it, Dave read it, and and uh, nothing glaring at this time since it's the new format and we you know you did it from scratch last year. It was really just some minor updates. Okay. So move. Second. Hey, all in favor? All, all right. right. All ready. <clears throat> and then we had the FEMA Peabines project um, that bid. And Therese, won't you take us through that? Sure. So that was a project. We had 10 bidders, actually. So um, as you can see on here, the North Road excavation was the low bidder. Um, I, uh, Dubois and King went through all the bids, excuse me, and did the analysis and they are the obvious, you know, low bidder. I have to say, um, Chris Bump and I went through these. He's the gentleman from the state that I work with frequently, um, on FEMA projects. And we were shocked by some of the numbers we had, we thought this was for sure, you know, under a 300,000, if not under $200,000 project. So when we saw the six and $800,000 numbers, we were really surprised. So, um, so anyway, so we've been through the process. This is one of our last FEMA projects to award. Um, the next one that we'll be awarding um, once we get the hydraulic study done is Pinello Bridge. So we are getting there folks, we're yeah. wrapping them up. We did receive some more payments, and obviously, as soon as we get pavements, um, we cut checks to Mascoma and send that money to pay down the line of credit we drew on. I, that was going to be my question, Therese, as I had written down here what the estimate for it, because I know we had talked several months ago where, well, originally, we didn't think it was going to be a whole lot. Of, right. Yeah, I think the construction... After the had... engineering piece, it, it, was, it seemed <laughs> that it was going to be more than we thought. Yeah, the construction estimate was, I think, 336000 Okay, so so this low bid currently is under the estimate that we had. Yep, and I called them about it to make sure we were, you know, still holding that these were the good prices and do the whole thing, and, and they were fine. So we will, once awarded, we'll move forward, and um, John, I believe it'll be John Ashley from Dubois and King and I will um, meet with the contractor. Okay. So I would um, entertain a motion to award the Peabine Slope Project to North Road Construction in the amount of $267,250. So move. 
Second. Second. Lindley second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. All right. Um, Therese, if it wouldn't be too big of a thing for our next regularly scheduled meeting, could you maybe provide us a, a simple spreadsheet on showing what what our uh, FEMA obligations were and what, what money we've received to date? Sure. You know, if the total amount is whatever, 1.2 million and this is yeah. how much we've received and this is how much we have coming or just something so that we can just see that. Absolutely, yeah, because I think she's finished all of the projects now and I think um, East the East Quadrant actually I think I can sign off on. I just got an email from Jessica today. So I can certainly let you know what we spent and what we're okay. you know, going to get back. Yeah, it would just be kind of interesting to see that. And I, you know, and also, you know, when we had the, when we had the major flood issues, you know, back on Irene, you know, of course the, you know, a lot of that stuff got swept under the table and yeah. So it'd be nice to see, you know, the pieces and when they were paid. Yeah. How well, they were smart this time. And, so. Yeah. Well, Mascoma was smart because they, and I agreed to it, they put in the documents that this was only to be used for the April 15th flood. So we took one draw of, I think, six or 650,000. I can't remember. And then, of course, we sent them back all the money already that we received from federal highways. We sent them mm -hmm. back the money from the debris removal underlying bridge. And I've just got another one. So I'm just sending them another check next week. So, okay. um, so yeah, so I can certainly um, do that for you. Does Does anybody on the board want anything further in regards to the FEMA projects that we have out there, or is that sufficient enough for now? No, it's good. It's good to have. Yeah, I think the only thing, like I said, we're waiting for is once Ripple finishes their hydraulic study, we'll be able to make some move for the the bridge, um, and deal with that, and then that will be it. Exciting. <laughs> well, it's exciting for me <laughs> about you, but I'm happy about it. We're excited with you. Yeah, there you go. I know Chris is excited because he's sick uh, of driving around taking pictures. Man, it's, it's such a long, drawn out process. It but really is. Really, really the amount is. of time that goes into it, it's just unreal. And then you think that you have all your ducks in a row, they throw a curveball at you. Yeah, I've actually done in the oh. last few weeks had to get some more things out of the river engineer because some projects that Jessica sent on, you know, once she does it, then they're reviewed and reviewed. And I've had a couple from somewhere in another state for FEMA and had to um, go back and give them, you know, additional information. So, um, and we are recent, just recently from Jared, some of it was just making sure that we had all of our engineering permits and things like that, which of course we did have you don't work in the river in vermont without a permit so <laughs> not usually no -uh, not when somebody's watching <laughs> hey i remember i remember uh, after irene watching uh you know big dozers and haul trucks going up and down the rivers i know yeah not anymore although i've decided it kind of depends which river engineer you get because there's a couple of them who i've asked the same questions got different answers and i'm like don't you work for each other and they're like yeah <laughs> so, I don't know. All right. Anything further in regards to the Peabine Slope? Do you have a time, any kind of a timetable? Uh, no. That, no, no, I haven't had the pre-construction meeting yet, so I don't know. And of course, because of COVID, um, I, I did, uh, North Road did ask me if they could start hauling because they can store some of the material in our pit and Mike Haker's pit. Um, but I had said they needed to wait until um, we got through this. Is there and a date for it, Therese? Is there a what? A completion date? Honestly, I don't have the bid here at my house, the FEMA bid. And because of COVID, you know, that I don't remember what our final date is and it may have changed a little. So I'll have more for you after the pre-construction meeting. And moving along, got the COVID-19 discussion. Okay, so um, boy, <laughs> if anybody thinks this doesn't take up a lot of time, they are completely wrong, because this is crazy how much time COVID takes. 
I was reading the art, the um, updated from the Agency of Commerce and Community Development, and now it's saying all employees, including those already working, except for first responders in our case, must complete and employers must document a training on mandatory health and safety requirements as provided by VOSHA or another training program that meets or exceeds the VOSHA provided standards by May 4th, 2020. They really didn't give us a whole bunch of time here. Um, so I sent out, I found the training today and sent it out to everybody. And I have had uh, four people already take it. Um, there is additional training that's much more in depth um, by the AGC, the Association of General Contractors. That training was $200, but they've made it free. God bless them. And I'm actually signed up to take that on Thursday. I know Chris Jarvis has already taken it. So I want to take that one first and, um, and then the other one. And then if necessary, I may ask Alan or Tim Mills, possibly both Alan and Tim to take the more in-depth training if I feel it's necessary. Pam Brown took the one online today and spoke to me afterwards. And what I was happy to hear was Pam said that there wasn't anything in the training that she didn't feel I had already told them. So that made me happy that we we're getting the message out there. And if, um, and, and if you take the- that's not, that's not the AGC training, Chris. That's the, a different one. If you take the AGC one at, after the training they send you, all the PowerPoints and toolbox talks and yeah and uh, employee guides and things and then you can actually sit down with each well you could sit down one on one or you could do it in an outside setting with you know five people mm -hmm. you can actually do the training to them so right GC one you become a trainer is what it is yeah that's handy but I figured it and. Yeah, I figured in this case, I wanted all the employees to take it. My biggest fear is that somebody is going to say to me, oh, you didn't tell me that, or you didn't tell me about that precaution, or I'm still putting together with Dietrich some information for the staff, which is going to be detailed in the sense like, this is how you properly clean your vehicle. This is how you properly wash your hands. This is how you make a mask, all that sort of stuff that, I mean, we forward it to them, but I want them to have it in a neat little bundle. And it's just hard because the information changes. You know, one day you got two people, then you got five, but then it's no, everybody has to social distance. Now it's where possible. And, you know, I'm, I'm telling you, my head's gonna explode before this whole thing is over. And, and so, what else is nice about the AGC one is uh, they do give um, certificates to everybody. Yes, yep. You could put them in your employee file as well as. Um, anytime you train somebody, you have to send that sheet back to the AGC so they keep documentation of it. So nice. And the, the training that back and said they never got trained, you could say, oh yeah, here it is. You know. Yeah. The training link that I sent out today also requires everyone to send it back to me. And I made that clear in the email that everybody had to provide mm -hmm. to me. I even told them they could send staff home early, you know, so that they could take it if somebody doesn't have a computer, how to figure that out. Um, but I did tell everybody they had to get me their completion form um, by May 4th. So I'm just going to put it in their personnel file. But, you know, I mean, by God, you come out with that decision on Friday and then, you know, thank goodness we're small. I don't know how companies that are really large all of a sudden got to have everybody and their brother trained by May 4th. So I hear you. It's, it's challenging. <laughs> I'm sure it is. Um, so. But yeah, it's challenging, but worth it. And I will say that from going through it, that pretty much the, the practices that we have uh, in still in the town currently is exactly what they're looking for. So uh, that's good. I have had prizes or anything like that. Good. And I had a conversation with North Road today, um, another contractor that I'm going to be doing a project with over the summer. And I sent them the links too and said to them, Gentlemen, I'm going to be looking for the fact that you've taken this and that you have the certification. So you might as well do it now. So I send it to both of them. Um, and I had spoken to our attorney, uh, Joe McLean, and he gave me some language to add. So we're gonna add it to this contract. I provided it to Dubois and King. I'm gonna try to get it added to uh, GW Tatro. But for any contract that we sign, there's a specific um, additional guidance about VOSHA, which basically says, you know, the town of Bethel is not going to bear any responsibility for protecting their employees from COVID and all that. So I did move forward and got some legal language from them too. So, you know, just trying to make sure we're all covered. And I do have a job meeting tomorrow 
uh, Tim Mills and I do with um, Aldrich and Elliot and GW Tatro. So we'll be able to find out then, Chris, what their practices and protocols are as well. Yeah, well, again, it, regardless of who's funding it, you know, the, uh, the contractors in the state of Vermont have to show proof that they've trained their employees through the COVID-19, so. Yeah. So I would just exactly. ask, like I said, he's already, he, I know that contractor, they've already done theirs, but they may yeah. want to just post it so yep. people can see it, that's all. Exactly. And Paul, you had a question about the budget. So at this point, frankly, Paul, we haven't spent a lot of money on COVID-19 salaries, of course, but, um, you know, for training or whatever, but I don't think we're going to get that money back from FEMA. Usually the only thing you get back from FEMA is overtime, but I haven't had, you know, 20 minutes to really delve into that yet. Um, the only expenses we have are that we've paid silo distributing for hand sanitizer. Um, we ordered for like 10 bucks, some thermometers that we may end up that we may end up that go on your forehead that we may end up distributing to staff to make sure that if, that if they don't have one home, they can take their temperature. Um, and the mailer, which we did, which, you know, will cost us less than $500 like we talked about. So, Currently, Paul, we don't have a lot of expenses as far as collection. Um, I guess, you know, I'm going to have to wait and see. We did wait. We didn't charge interest in February. We haven't charged penalty, but I did have Dietrich reissue uh, delinquent tax and water bills in March because I knew people were also, you know, may get a payment from the feds and any refund they were getting back just to remind them that, you know, they may have had delinquent taxes. And um, so until taxes are due in May, I'm not going to have a big idea if it's increased our delinquency. Cause in some cases, um, Paul, some people were already delinquent. So I can't really tell you at this moment, if I had any additional delinquencies, because we normally kick out over a hundred delinquent water sewer bills. And we did this time as well. So, and, and as we've said, we're moving forward with the May 15th tax thing and I've already received tax payments. And I put a note in the newspaper that'll go out this week for the next three weeks. So, uh, as, but we don't have a lot of expenses at this point. No, I know it, I just heard that the state, for example, has eliminated discretionary spending for the rest of the, the this fiscal year. Um, and I didn't know if there was any consideration that we needed to do about that. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, it's hard to tell. Yeah, I'm sure for them, they have all sorts of expenses, you know, that we don't, you know, maybe they've had to set people up to work from home, that sort of thing. But yeah. currently we've seen a little bit of savings in our budgets in some places. So- um, Well, my, my other concern was uh, involved, you know, when we do have the tax payment that's due on the 15th, what uh, I know that there's a bill that the governor has now to sign that's going to change, possibly change the ability of the select board to adjust penalties, waive penalties, interest, and do things about changing the dates when you can pay your taxes, as opposed to all the stuff that now the abatement board is the only one that can actually do that, you know, abate interest and penalties and things. And I'm just wanted to plant the seed that we may end up with considerable number of abatement requests. Um, mm -hmm. if, if this doesn't go through, you know, if it goes through this process mm -hmm. in there, I know the first line of defense, as it were, is for them to contact you, you know, if there's gonna be a problem with the payment or whatnot, and then eventually it may move to the abatement process. Mm -hmm. um, That's true. So we're like you, I'm waiting to see if the governor signs the language, uh, signs it because I don't know yet. My recommendation is to continue to move forward, as I've said, with the May 15th payment, because, yeah. you know, they're even offering unemployment for contractors. So it, you know, it depends if the governor doesn't sign it, then um, yes, you know, we'll certainly work with people and they will have the ability to, um, go for abatement, but of course there's very specific language. So I'm gonna make sure that that language is issued to people and put on our website. It doesn't mean just every Tom, Dick and Harry can waive interest and penalties. So I'm going to try to make that very clear to people, Paul, so that you hopefully don't have a huge run on it. I make sure that yeah. they understand the specific reasons for abatement. Yeah, part of the paperwork that we send out when somebody applies for an abatement lists those 
six or seven or eight different um, options that you have to fit into before you be considered even. Right. So I'm going to try to get those out ahead of the rush. That way, yeah. make sure that people, if they, when, instead of just saying, you know, they can go to the BCA, make sure that they have the language in advance so that they can make a decision before it even goes to Pam, you know, to write that letter. That way people can say, hey, you know what, these are the reasons and I don't qualify. So to let right. them know. But yes, if the governor does give the select board the right to waive or postpone interest and penalty, then we'll have a discussion at that time. But right now we're we're just going forward. I am a little concerned about, about uh, actually us getting the state school tax rate before July 15th, because you may not realize that we have to mail tax bills out 30 days prior to the due date. And normally they're due August 15th. So we, you know, uh, if there's a little wiggle room there, we may end up having to push our August 15th payment out to the 30th or beginning of September. I don't know yet, depending on how long it's going to take the state to kick out school tax because I am not in favor of issuing a municipal tax bill and then later having to issue a school tax bill. That would be very confusing for people. And it, and it specifies in this bill um, that the governor hopefully will sign that this is specific to only property taxes would not apply to educational taxes, uh, educational property tax part of it at all. That would still right. that would still have to stay the way it is. Uh, so basically, we could waive the municipal portion, but we right. can't the waive the school portion. portion. Yeah, I just I put it out the bill a little while ago to look at it. I'm expecting yeah. we'll a run on abatements. Yeah, exactly. So we'll see. Um, you know, when he signs it, it, it whether or not it's worth it to us, because every you know all of us here on the screen right now realize that the edu the municipal portion of your tax rate is really minor. So the penalty and interest on that is not much. It's if they're not gonna waive it on a school tax, I'm not really sure. But it, but it would eliminate the need for getting, you know, nine, 10 people, the just the piece and the select board and the listers and yeah. all the folks together for repetitive meetings. It would just allow the select board to yeah. to make a, a policy, I guess, that um, yep. exactly. under certain conditions you could waive interest or penalties. Because so. at yeah. the end of the day, you're only looking at penalties and interest on a third a third of the overall tax, you know? So, I mean, it's right. really pretty so, minute at that point. Yeah, so we're just gonna have to wait and see what the governor, you know, what he does and what the bill looks like. So, um, a couple of- That's all I- I have for COVID-19 was really um, a couple of things just to keep an eye out. And I know, um, Therese, you and I talked about one earlier, um, but, um, you know, now that the stimulus bill um, phase, well, I don't know, whatever, the first one is on on its way or has been accept, received at the state and there's another one coming. Um, <clears throat> some of those pieces of those stimulus bill has to do with infrastructure. So, if there's any pieces of that, that maybe we have opportunities to apply for grants or, you know, for whatever it is, if it's paved road or maybe some more water line repair, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah. Just, um, have you, I mean, cause it hasn't passed yet. I mean, right. Cause it last I knew the last stimulus package we had didn't affect towns of 5,000 res or less. So it didn't affect Bethel. So do you know what the status well, of that one is? Some, some of the money too is directly to the state and the state can divvy it up too. So, right. Or keep it. <laughs> well, you know, there, you know, once give it to the, to the college yeah. system, <laughs> yeah. just like, just like any bill that starts in government, you know, it starts yeah. upon the cause. And then by the time everybody gets their hands on it, it has little caveats for everything. So, right. It might be something just to reach out to the league to see, these stimulus bills coming in, um, you know, what does that mean for the towns of our site? Is, is there any potential grant opportunities or? Yeah, they're usually pretty good about kicking us out stuff, but I'll. Um, I, I know they. I know there's like already. I know the state. They just put out some extra uh, roadway maintenance stuff with the first one they got. So. 
Right. There's money so, tied to there too, all kinds of stuff. Well, sure. The other thing I wanted to, to talk about a little bit was the next year's budget. So we know that the state, the, the state of Vermont's budget's getting blown out of the water pretty much with they're expecting hundreds of millions of dollars of shortfall. Sure. So what kind of impact is that going to have with the money that we expect from the state in the next budget? And I don't think I don't think it's going to do much, Paul, because really we get state highway aid and I don't and they've already set that aside. I don't see it really affecting that. Um, mm -hmm. For us, as far as anything that we bank on getting from them, current use, those sort of things. But for us, luckily, um, you know, we don't, I don't think we're too, I can't think of anything that's really going to affect us any, unless they all of a sudden start adding payroll tax and stuff like that, that we didn't budget for. Yeah. And is, is the water line replacement money safe? The mm -hmm. 2.8 million? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yep, we're good to go there. Um, they, you know, we've already done the bond paperwork and all that. And then, you know, they already had that money prior to this. Okay. So okay. Um, I don't think that they, because it was EPA money, I don't think they could legally even um, touch that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And, and, um, and then Teresa and I talked about it earlier today, but Teresa was going to look into any of the uh, long-term loans that the town has currently um, just to check on to see what we have for variable interest loans versus fixed interest loans because typically typically when you go through um, economical disasters like we're going through right now and the government starts um, pumping money into the economy at some point there's the fear of inflation and, and when inflation goes up interest rates go up and everything else so uh, Therese was going to was going to look to see what we had for any long-term debt that are variable interests that we may want to, you know, move to a fixed interest to be safe. Um, but I think she said right now there was only maybe one. Yeah, just one. Yeah. Which is the um, church street bridge. So I just have to pull the bond documents because sometimes bonds start with it's listed on the um, auditor schedule as variable, but sometimes bonds start with an interest rate for a period of time and then go to a different interest rate. So I have to take a look at the actual bond documents. So um, I have a, a list, a note to do it, but I haven't had a chance yet. But other than that, everything else we had was a fixed rate. Oh, speaking of that though, I did should say, I did uh, put all the paperwork into Mascoma to, because obviously we're gonna need a line of credit when we start the water project. So that will be set for your next agenda. I did a 600,000 line of credit. We can, process you put in requisition requisitions and get money from the state and in you know in a perfect world they're going to turn it around within three weeks but i don't know with covid and everything else so i did ask for a line of credit um hope you know just in case we need it hopefully we don't but better right. safe than sorry and that was a reasonable interest rate at this point too and, and, so was, and it and it's also something for the board to think about. And I know Therese was already kind of going down that path, but you know, when uh, when times like we're going through right now, I mean, people look at it two different ways. One, you can tighten up your, you know, tighten up your purse and hold your money close to you. The other thing too is there's opportunities out there to, you know, buy things now that may be more expensive to buy here in the next couple of years too. So, um, you know, the likelihood from what I'm hearing is that interest rates will start to climb again, you know, um, you know, which those, you know, one, two, three percent could end up being double that. Um, so things like buying a new town truck, you know, things like that or opportunities maybe to save on interest by purchasing now rather than waiting, you know, two or three years for it. Um, so as part of that discussion, what Chris and I were talking about was the town truck. So um, I had some specs and sent them to AJ and Alan and AJ gave me some feedback on his and he, I guess he went over it with Alan. So Kelly's typing those up now. So once she's done typing, I left a note on her desk today and asked her to email them and mail them to the equipment committee so that they can take a look at the specs for the truck. Obviously we are we're hoping prior to get somebody to come in and evaluate the price of the freight liners, the value, 
well, obviously we're going to keep one and get rid of one. But with COVID, that wasn't able to happen. But now that the weather is changing, um, we're hoping that we can get someone to come pull the truck out and then they could go through them outside. So um, that would hopefully help us take care of that. Because at this point, I think that what we had decided was we probably have a down payment, <clears throat> a good one for a new truck, but probably not enough to foot the entire bill. So uh, Chris is right. If we could get a lower interest rate in that loan sooner, we need to move on that. So that's, we're in the process of doing that right now. And that's all I have for COVID-19. I don't know if anyone has any questions or comments or. Lindley, did you get that email? I see, I was you and Rebecca, Rebecca sent it and she'd CC'd you. And she asked me about an EWWD list and I emailed her back. I, I don't know what that stood for. Too many acrom acronyms in my life. Yeah, I, did. <laughs> I was waiting for her answer on that because I didn't understand what that oh, was. Oh, thank God. I was like, oh, what is this? I felt bad. <laughs> like maybe she told me a million times and I, I was like, I don't God, I didn't know. Okay, good. So other than that, I think, I hope by now people have got the mailer. I was really disappointed because um, a wonderful volunteer did that thing, breakneck speed. We got it to, from, I took it from Spalding to the post office on a Wednesday and I had people the following week that still hadn't got them. I was not happy, but I'm hoping everybody by now has received their yellow mailer and it was yeah, good it looked, information. It looked great, yeah. Good. Yeah, I, I already had a couple people who that was very helpful for and were able to take advantage of some, um, you know, the food shelf and some other things. So it, it was good, so. Okay. Did, uh, did you have anything extra in your town manager report or did we go through most of that already? For Let me look, I can't remember. Um, I know it's probably COVID, COVID, COVID. <laughs> My COVID. life is just COVID. <laughs> uh, yeah, the only other thing was that, um, you know, God, I just want to get this thing out. The roadside mowing RFP, I need to, I'm like, you know, this close to finishing and then get doing something else. So that I hope to put out. And I ended up getting, um, I needed to quote on the um, assistance with the structures grant. And actually Jeff Gilman went out and gave me a price on it so um, so that I could put it in the grant. The only thing that I need to calculate is how much for um, guardrail and how much to replace the rail. So then, because that's due by May 15th to the state. So um, mm -hmm. I'll get that done. So other than that, no, Chris, everything is covered on my town manager's report. The uh, vehicle for Oscar? No yeah, he's he he's looking at one. He told me the other day that it was oh god, don't make me swear to Heartland. Norwich. Heartland. Norwich. Norwich. Oh good. Okay. Heartland must be somebody else. Norwich. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that he was looking at that. And and that could work out great for us because we were, you know, you're always concerned about what you got to put on it for equipment. So he said currently his vehicle he's running. Um, he's been a little bit concerned, I guess, about the water pump, but I'm just like, look, drive it. If it dies, it dies, so be it. But um, he's looking into Norwich and has been talking to their chief. And so- We have to get him a dump body on his next one, Therese? <laughs> we had, I know we should probably, but no, he was great. He went up and as you all probably know, he helped out and he cleaned up um, Randy Oaks, some of the property there with the trash. and. Uh, Randy paid for it. Randy went with him and um, he was going to have to ticket the guy and he had, the gentleman had several issues. So um, Oscar South, stopped uh, by South and Main asked Street. me. South yes. Main yeah. South Main Street. Yep. And Oscar asked me if he could take the town truck. And I said, sure. So he did it and he did it. It was, you know, it was a nice thing to do. It cleaned it up and it was really didn't take him that long. And I thought it was a nice way to work with a resident instead of trying to find them. So, yeah, thought that was good as well. And then, and then Teresa and I also oh. talked about Teresa and I also talked about today that you know maybe maybe at this point maybe late June that we'll um, we'll put the trash ordinance back on the list um, to move forward with that, but. I guess we'll yeah, see how right. You, weren't month. you waiting until you could have more people, Chris, to do a um, a, you know, a public hearing? Yeah, I mean, just the information I'm gathering right now is it looks like that June it's going to be well, 
a majority of things are going to be opened up, um, but um, by the middle end, what's your no, what's I, your crystal ball saying? <laughs> yeah, I think it was the twelfth, but no, <laughs> no, I I I've heard you know good things about June, um, <laughs> so you know it's just something to think about, and then you know there's a, a process there anyway, so it's not like we would get right into it. There's a you know, we'd have to go back through a public meeting and you know, just, yeah, exactly. There's a couple month process there before we could even enact anything. So, yeah, I know too. I just realized that you had asked about, you know, making, setting my goals with a better timeline, but frankly, until I have a little more information from COVID about, you know, when I can actually get some of this done, depending on if I could get three or four people together at the same time. So I need to, I'll try to put that in your next packet. Uh, so I need to get a locksmith, the constable, then the appraiser and myself all in one place. And when it was only two people, I couldn't do that. So now I guess I can. Yep. All right. Uh, let's see. We had the select board minutes from the 13th. Yep. Anybody have any questions or amendments to that? Or if not, I'll just take a motion to approve the minutes for the 13th as written. So move. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 And then other communications in our packet, there was the rec committee that was in there. It was also the solid waste committee. Anything you want to add to that, Mo? Or no, not at this time. Okay, we're we're working on some stuff. All right. I think those were the only two committees I saw in the packet. Yeah, the other stuff was just Oscar because I asked Kelly yeah. to pull some stuff because I felt like it had been a really long time since he put anything in there. So I did ask her to um put that in there so I see that you had some information from Oscar the only thing is with his sheets right now from what I'm seeing is there's I mean it's it's basically just telling him when he's on duty and off duty but there's really no details in there of what's going on you know maybe he only writes something in there if something does happen but it'd be nice to kind of know what he spent whatever four hours eight hours spend his time doing yeah that's yeah I didn't even yeah, there's no detail. Uh, Kelly, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Kelly. I see him around. Just I just, said, oh, no. it just says suspicious Church Street with VSA, VSP. Check again. I see what you're saying. I mean, yeah, I think out of the four, out of the four that were there, I think there was only common one day. Ah, uh, so I'll have to ask Kelly about that if he has other reports because I she had printed these off and then scanned them to you. I didn't see them until later. So let me yeah. ask. Her. Um, I mean, we don't need all the details, but it'd be nice to know that whatever you pulled the car over for speeding, you know, or yeah, exactly, or answer answer a dog oh. or whatever it is, you know. Yeah, exactly. So I will ask her. There's got to be something that gives a little more input. I, I think there is. Isn't there something on the website? Isn't there something on the website you can punch and see what he's done on the uh, constables on the section of that? Well, we can maybe. You I don't know. Yeah, already look. At one point, that there's a more detailed report that he fills out that he has on his laptop. Okay, I'll have to ask Kelly about it, or I'll actually I'll just ask Oscar. He'll he'll tell me. I don't really spend any time in Spider Data, which is his software. She <laughs> Kelly does, so I I don't. I'll just say Kelly put something in there from the constable. And it so. doesn't it doesn't need to be too detailed, but it would just be kind of nice to no. know what's going on. You know. Yep, what he's doing with his time. Yep. Because, you know, in the past, like, you know, when we started seeing like speed uh, rising there a year or so ago, you know, we were able to do some speed studies and, you know, just be nice yeah. to know where our problem areas might be. And Yeah, know. I spoke to him today yes. and asked him to do another targeted um, traffic, targeted traffic patrol on Christian Hill because I received some more complaints about speeding. Yeah. So I Dave, asked him to check Dave around up there. Asked again? It's probably Dave Eddy, probably driving around like a crazy man, but. Oh, he Oscar. does. <laughs> <laughs> I hear he and that Mo drag race up and down Christian Hill. Yeah. That's probably what's happening. 
It, but, but that's with our John Deere tractors, so I don't think we're competing too badly. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, and did we have any other business come before the board? I don't have anything else. Right now, our next meeting is scheduled for what is it? The 11th? May 11th. Yep. May 11th. 11th. We'll have to talk about, I think, our this, the, is the following meeting set for some holiday, Memorial Day or something. We may I have to, so. we may have to work around that. So I'll make a note. We either we can do it Everybody the next day. Travel plans for that day? <laughs> Probably some mass exodus. But last uh, I checked, yeah. Teresa, I'm wide open. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll just leave it on Memorial Day. I don't know. Um, but anyways, uh, we'll all make sure we'll figure yeah. that out on the 11th. Well, I'm trying to remember what we've done in the past. I think we we had moved it the week prior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it'll be Who like knows? 11th and yeah. 18th or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. And we could always do it on a Tuesday. I mean, I will, you know, well, I guess we'll give us a couple more weeks to see what changes. Who knows? We could be back at home again. I don't know. Saturday morning, six o'clock. <laughs> oh, that's that's a good look right there. <laughs> You're that late day? <laughs> Once in a while. Uh, okay. Well, we can talk about that next time. I'll make a note. All right. Anything else? Anybody have? I move we adjourn. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Hey, have a good evening, everybody. All right. Thank Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks.